this is winter oilseed rape, which is a really important crop in the UK. Um, after wheat and winter barley, it's the third most important crop. Um, and the reason it's so important is it's a break crop, allowing growers to grow something different from cereals. So it's actually a, a very important crop in terms of food. We grow it to produce uh, edible oils. It's also used in lubricants. And it's becoming quite important in terms of bioenergy, in terms of biodiesel. This is winter oilseed rape in the autumn. This is a healthy leaf, as you can see. And here we have one that's infected with the foma leaf spot pathogen. You can see the lesion here with uh, dark pycnidia producing spores. And the pathogen grows down the leaf and down the petiole into the stem. And if this uh, happens early enough in the autumn, it can reach the stem base where it sits over the winter time. And then as the spring temperatures start to warm up, this can then develop into a stem canker at the base of the plant, which if left untreated, can cause girdling of the stem before harvest, the development of these cankers at the base here. And as you can see, it cuts off the, the water supply to the oilseed rape plant and the plant can die before harvest. The major disease of oilseed rape that growers encounter in the north of England and in Scotland is light leaf spot, uh, which is a disease that affects the leaves themselves at this time of year, in late autumn and winter, uh, but can infect the developing um, floral structures and pods of the oilseed rape crop in the springtime. The main problem with uh, controlling both of these diseases is that it's very hard to actually know when you need to actually spray in terms of a fungicide to control and in the, in the case of light leaf spot it's actually whether you need to spray at all in a particular year. So what we've been doing here at Rothamsted is using some of our modelling techniques to look at these two diseases, to understand the epidemiology of the diseases and then using meteorological data to actually forecast whether the diseases are going to be a, a problem in a particular season. The way that the forecast helps the growers is that previous to the actual forecast being available, farmers didn't have the time to go out into the field to look for the disease themselves. And so what tended to happen was that they would go in and spray anyway on a sort of a calendar basis, whether a spray was actually needed or not. Now that growers have the forecast, they can actually look at their computer models that we generate and see whether the light leaf spot disease is going to be a risk for them in their particular crop. This is a really good example of uh, science helping out um, the, the whole of the industry. Because we start off with uh, mathematicians producing models, um, which then allows us to tell growers exactly when their crops are at risk from these potential diseases. Um, and obviously, if they don't have to spray, then they save money, they save time. Uh, and ultimately, um, it's beneficial to all of us because we can grow crops here in the UK uh, whilst minimizing the amount of pesticide input to those crops.